Well, hello, Life Group leaders. I hope that you all are enjoying uh, your new year. Uh, We're thankful to have you all here serving alongside us as we seek to teach our church members more about the Word of God that we all might bring more glory to Him. And so we have a great lesson um, this week. And so as you all are digging into the text, I hope these next couple of minutes will be helpful to you. Just a short a uh, few notes about the passage that we're reading. And so this week we're looking at John chapter 5, verses 5 through 16. And so we're going to just hop right in. I'm going to make a few points about them, um, and then I will let that be that. So John chapter 5, starting in verse 5, says, One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been there a long time. And he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once he was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now we'll continue on with this passage in just a few moments. But as we begin by looking at these first few verses, I think there's a few important details that need to be pointed out. First, understanding the context of this passage is really helpful as we seek to dig into uh, the, the meaning behind the text. We understand throughout the book of John, as Jesus has been performing miracles, this is kind of the third big miracle, uh, healing miracle that Jesus has performed. And the first section of John, we see a hesitation, some reservation that the people have towards Jesus. But this passage marks a very sharp and distinct shift in the people's reactions to the works of Jesus. What's interesting is starting here, we see outright rejection, outright persecution, even plans to kill Jesus for the good works that he's performing. The reason why this is interesting is because this passage also begins by explaining that Jesus is leaving the region of Galilee and heading to Jerusalem, God's city, the capital of God's chosen people. And it is here where his rejection grows the fiercest. All throughout this text, we're seeing the hypocrisy of the people of Israel, especially the Jewish religious leaders. And this context only highlights the hypocrisy that they have. The closer he gets to the temple of God, the greater his rejection is by his people. So Jesus has made his way, this is during the time of a festival, and he enters into Jerusalem. And there, as you come through one of the northern gates to the city, there is a pool described in this text called the Pool of Bethesda. Now there is an urban legend surrounding this pool of water. Many people believed that during random times throughout the day, an angel would come down and stir the water. And if you were the first person in the water, you would be healed of whatever ailments you have. And so because of this, all around this pool, you had masses of people laying around, eagerly watching and waiting for the water to be stirred in hopes that they could be healed. Now, it's important to understand that being disabled in this time, in this region, throughout human history was not a good thing by any means. The society did not think well of disabled people, but saw them as cursed by God as being punished for their sins or worse. And so there were not systems in place to care for the needs of these types of people. And so this was their hope. This was their entire hope was to be healed so that they could be treated as a normal human being and have an opportunity to have a normal life. And so very intentionally, we see Jesus goes to this pool as he makes his way into the city. Now, it especially explains that Jesus knew that this man had been laying there a long time. We see that this is a divine, supernatural moment that just like Jesus knew about the history of the woman at the well in previous chapter, Jesus knows the history of this man. He knew he'd be laying there. He knew his ailments, and he knew his plan was to come and heal him. And so this story, as we so famously know, is very simple, right? Jesus tells the man, get up and walk, and the man gets up and walks. This is a story about Jesus revealing God's 
nature. There's this constant contrast throughout this text between Jesus, his character, his actions, and the Jewish leaders, the Pharisee, their character, and their actions. We see first, Jesus cares for these people, the marginalized, those that are disabled, that are suffering. He cares for them enough to show up and offer healing. Jesus is revealing his nature. But as the text continues, not only do we see Jesus revealing who God truly is, but we see the Jews in response revealing who they truly are. It explains that in verse uh, 10, Now this day was the Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take your bed and walk. And they asked him, Who is the man that said to take up your bed and walk? Now there was a man, now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn as there was a crowd in the place. Right here we see something very interesting take place. We see the Jews, rather than praising God for this miracle that has taken place, rather than rejoicing for the fact that this man who had been disabled for, says, 38 years, they instantly seek to persecute Jesus for violating what they consider to be the law. Now, it's an important note that whenever they accuse him of breaking the Sabbath, they are not actually referring to the law found in the Torah. What they had done in the Torah, there are rules about the Sabbath that we're familiar with. You're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. However, the Jewish leaders had created oral traditions known as the Mishnah. And this was a list of all of these rules on top of the law of Moses that people also had to keep. An extra layer to make sure that you never actually broke any of the laws. And so Jesus was not breaking any laws. The man was not breaking laws. But what they were breaking was the oral traditions that these men had created by themselves. Not according to the word of God. And in this situation, the oral tradition is actually contradicting the very laws that they claim to be trying to keep. Now, it's important that we see that this interaction that Jesus is having with this man and with the Jewish leaders is completely intentional. This is completely by God's sovereignty. Jesus chose to be here. He chose to do this healing specifically on the Sabbath to create this confrontation to reveal the hypocrisy and backwardsness of the Jews' way of thinking. They were creating laws that prevented them from obeying the very words of God, the true law. Rather than having compassion, rather than showing love, rather than rejoicing and bringing glory to the Lord for this healing that has taken place, they chose to lift up their own traditions as mightier and more sovereign than the words of God. And so Jesus is revealing their nature as he has revealed God's nature as well. And so as the passage concludes with these last few verses, Jesus goes again after all this has taken place, and he finds the man in the temple and he says, see you are well. Now sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. And the man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing all of these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered him, My father is working until now, and I am working. This is what's so significant about this passage. First, we see that Jesus is revealing God's nature. Second, we see that Jesus is revealing the Jews' nature and how they are hypocrites and they are not truly lovers of God. But third and finally, and most significantly, Jesus is revealing his nature. He is revealing that he is truly God. And we see that in two ways. First, he doesn't argue with the Jews about their oral traditions. He doesn't point out the legal fallacies that they are pulling in this confrontation. Rather, instead of arguing that he wasn't truly working, but he was doing a healing, he instead says this, I am working because my father is working. 
He does two things. He first claims that he has authority over the Sabbath, that he is not limited or restrained by anything here because he is above it all. He is the one that made it in the first place. And secondly, we see he is referring to God, to Yahweh, as his Father, equating himself with God. And so you see, Jesus has created this drama, if you will, this confrontation, so that he may have the opportunity to declare and to reveal that he is Yahweh. He is the God of the Sabbath, the one who created it, the one who came up with it, and the one to whom the Sabbath rest points. And he's doing this to reveal how backwards and lost his people have become. And so I'm hoping that as you study this, as you dig into the text, you'll find lots of value both for yourself, but also for your life groups. I hope this has been of help to you guys. I'm praying for you all as you prepare this week. I hope you all have a wonderful week.